Your brain uses 20 watts of power. ChatGPT uses enough electricity to power a small city. But here's what nobody's telling you. There's a new type of AI that runs on the power of a light bulb, could be 10,000 times more energy efficient than what we use now, and it's about to flip a $400 billion industry on its head. It's called Analog AI, and China, the US, and Europe are in an all-out war to control it first. In the next 15 minutes, I'm going to show you why trillion-dollar companies are secretly betting everything on this and why you need to understand this now. Let's get into it. What's up, everyone? Before we dive in, quick question. Do you know the difference between your grandfather's vinyl record and Spotify? One is analog, one is digital. That same battle is happening right now in artificial intelligence, and the winner will reshape everything from your smartphone to self-driving cars to the future of warfare. I spent the last month researching this, talking to engineers, reading research papers, and what I found blew my mind. And here's the crazy part. Most people have never even heard of analog AI. So smash that like button, subscribe if you're not already, because this is the kind of content that YouTube doesn't push but needs to be seen. Let's break this down. First, let's talk about what we currently have. Digital AI. This is what powers ChatGPT, Google's Gemini, Claude, and basically every AI you've ever interacted with. Digital AI works in ones and zeros. Everything is either on or off. It's like a massive network of light switches, billions of them, flipping on and off millions of times per second. When you type a prompt into ChatGPT, Here's what happens. Your words get converted into numbers. Those numbers get processed through layers and layers of calculations. Each calculation requires moving data from memory to processor and back again. Training GPT-4 likely required 25,000 high-end GPUs running for months. The electricity cost alone? Over $100 million. The carbon footprint? Equivalent to 500 Americans' lifetime emissions and that's just to train it once. And here's the stat that made me stop and rewind the research paper. For certain AI workloads, analog hardware could reduce power consumption by over 90%, and some experimental systems even approach 99% efficiency gains. If this scaled across the industry, the impact on global energy use would be massive. Now, before I show you the alternative, here's what's keeping tech CEOs up at night. Digital AI is hitting a wall, and I'm about to show you why. Digital AI has three massive problems. Problem number one, power consumption. Training and running these models requires insane amounts of electricity. We're talking about data centers that consume as much power as small countries. Problem number two, speed limitations. Data has to constantly move between memory and processor. It's called the von Neumann bottleneck, and it's like having a Ferrari engine, but only being able to drive in first gear. Problem number three, heat. All those transistors flipping create heat, massive heat. Data centers spend almost as much energy cooling these systems as running them. And here's the kicker. As AI models get bigger and more powerful, these problems get exponentially worse. We physically cannot keep scaling this way. So what's the solution? Enter Analog AI, and this is where things get absolutely wild. Analog AI doesn't use ones and zeros. Instead, it uses continuous values, like a dimmer switch instead of an on-off switch. It processes information using the physical properties of electrical circuits themselves. Think about it like this. Digital AI is like moving buckets of water back and forth between your house and a well. Exhausting, slow, and wasteful. Analog AI is like letting gravity flow water downhill through pipes. Effortless, instant, and natural. That's the difference we're talking about. But here's where it gets insane. Remember how I said your brain uses 20 watts? Your brain is an analog computer. It doesn't use ones and zeros. It uses electrochemical gradients, continuous signals flowing through neurons. Analog AI is literally mimicking the most powerful computer we know, the human brain. Now I need to show you something. I came across a keynote from an IBM Research VP from last month, and I've never seen a tech executive look genuinely scared before. But when he talked about their analog chip results, they built an analog AI chip that performs matrix calculations. 
the literal foundation of all AI, using 14 times less energy than digital. And here's what made his hands shake while presenting. That's the first generation. They think they can hit 100x efficiency within three years. Do you understand what that means? The entire 400 billion dollar GPU industry, NVIDIA, AMD, all of it, could be racing toward obsolescence. And they know it. Let me break down what's really happening here. Advantage number one, energy efficiency. Analog chips can be 1,000 to 10,000 times more efficient for specific AI operations. Not 10% better, not twice as good. 10,000 times. This isn't an improvement. It's a paradigm shift. Advantage number two, speed. No von Neumann bottleneck. Calculations happen where the data lives. It's like having your kitchen, dining room and pantry all in the same place instead of spread across three different buildings. Advantage number three, parallel processing. Analog circuits can process multiple calculations simultaneously using physics itself. Electron flow naturally performs complex mathematics. Advantage number four, size. You can pack way more analog processing into a smaller space. We're talking about AI that could run on devices the size of your fingernail. Okay, so if analog AI is so amazing, why isn't it everywhere? Why is everyone still using digital? Great question. Analog AI has some serious challenges. Challenge number one, precision. Digital is exact. One is always one, zero is always zero. Analog is inherently noisy. It's like the difference between a laser pointer and a flashlight. Analog AI has to deal with variations in temperature, voltage fluctuations, manufacturing imperfections. Challenge number two, programming complexity. Digital computers are easy to program. It's just logical instructions. Analog circuits are harder to design and configure. You're working with physics, not just logic. Challenge number three, standardization. The entire tech industry is built around digital. All our tools, programming languages, frameworks, everything. Switching to analog means rebuilding a lot of infrastructure. Challenge number four, manufacturing. Digital chips are manufactured with incredibly precise processes refined over 50 years. Analog AI needs new manufacturing techniques. But here's what's exciting. Companies and researchers are solving these problems fast. And this is where the plot twist comes in. What if I told you the future isn't digital or analog? It's both. Stay with me, because this is where it gets really interesting. The smartest engineers in the world aren't asking which is better. They're asking, how do we use both? Think about it. Digital AI is great at precise calculations, logical reasoning, and storing exact information. Analog AI is amazing at pattern recognition, sensory processing, and energy-efficient computation. Example. Number one, smartphones. Imagine your next phone has a digital processor for apps and an analog AI chip for the camera. The analog chip processes images in real time using almost no battery, while the digital chip handles the complex editing. Example, number two, self-driving cars. Analog sensors process visual data instantly, spotting pedestrians and obstacles. Digital AI makes the complex decisions about navigation and route planning. Example. Number three, robotics. Analogy AI handles real-time motor control and sensory feedback, just like your nervous system. Digital AI handles higher level planning and decision making. IBM, MIT, Stanford, and dozens of startups are racing to build these hybrid systems. And the companies that crack this code first? They'll dominate the next decade of tech. But here's where this gets really intense. And this is the part the media isn't covering. China, the United States, and Europe are no longer racing for the most powerful chip. They're racing for the lowest power chip. Because whoever cracks analog AI first doesn't just win the tech industry. They win military supremacy, economic dominance, and control over the next 50 years of innovation. China just announced a $50 billion fund specifically for analog and neuromorphic computing. The US Chips Act quietly earmarked billions for alternative computing architectures. 
The EU has a secretive program called Horizon Beyond, focused on this exact technology. This isn't about your smartphone getting better. This is about who controls the infrastructure of the AI age. And the clock is ticking. But here's what's keeping defense analysts awake at night and why this matters way beyond tech stocks. The country that wins the analog AI race doesn't just get better consumer products. They get AI-powered military systems that can operate independently for years. They get surveillance networks that run on solar panels. They get autonomous weapons that never need charging. I interviewed a former DARPA engineer off the record last week. He told me, whoever perfects analog AI first achieves military dominance that makes nuclear weapons look like a footnote. Those were his exact words. Let's think about what happens when AI becomes 100 times more energy efficient. Implication number one, edge AI everywhere. AI doesn't need to be in the cloud anymore. Your watch, your glasses, your earbuds, they can all run powerful AI locally. No internet needed, complete privacy. Implication number two, climate impact. Data centers currently use one, 2% of global electricity. If we can make AI 100x more efficient, we could expand AI capabilities massively while reducing energy consumption. Implication number three, medical devices. Imagine a pacemaker with AI that learns your heart patterns, or a prosthetic limb with analog AI that responds as naturally as a real limb. These need to run for years on tiny batteries. Implication number four, space exploration. Analogy AI could enable sophisticated AI in space probes and rovers without massive power supplies. We're talking about smart emissions to Mars, the outer planets, beyond. Implication number five, the real power shift. Here's what makes this geopolitical. The 400 billion GPU industry is currently dominated by American companies, NVIDIA, AMD, Intel. But analog AI requires completely different manufacturing processes. China has been investing in analog semiconductor facilities for a decade while everyone was focused on digital chips. They saw this coming. If analog AI becomes the dominant technology, we could see the entire semiconductor power structure flip. American companies spent 50 years perfecting digital. China might leapfrog all of that. And there's something else that should terrify you. More efficient AI means AI can be deployed anywhere. Remote mountain surveillance, ocean floor monitoring, autonomous drones that operate for months without recharging. Every authoritarian regime's dream and every privacy advocate's nightmare. When AI costs 10,000 times less power to run, you can put it everywhere. And I mean everywhere. So, analog AI versus digital AI, which is better? Here's my take. It's not about which is better. It's about using the right tool for the right job. Digital AI revolutionized software. Analogy AI will revolutionize hardware. Together, they'll create AI that's smarter, faster, and way more accessible than anything we have today. We're living through a massive paradigm shift in computing. In five years, every device you own will probably have both digital and analog AI working together. Your phone, your car, maybe even your clothes. The question isn't whether this will happen. It's who will lead the way and how we'll use it. If this video opened your eyes to something you'd never heard about before, do me a favor. Hit that like button and subscribe. This channel is all about breaking down the technology that's shaping our future before everyone else is talking about it. And drop a comment below. Did you know about analog AI before this video? Are you excited or concerned about this technology? I read every single comment and I want to hear your thoughts. If you want to go deeper on AI topics like this, check out my video on Quantum Silk Route where tech meets geopolitics.